Good morning, everybody. I want to thank you for joining me for our morning devotion. And uh, my name is John Phipps, and I'm the lead pastor of Park Place Church here in Pinellas Park, Florida. <clears throat> and it's my honor and privilege to be with you today uh, as we are working through uh, as we are working through the Bible. We have been doing devotion together uh, most every day. We're always on at 11 a.m. So thank you for joining us every single day except Sunday. On Sundays, you can join us at weareparkplace.com at 10.15 for our morning service. And I'm looking forward to uh, something special. So there's a nice surprise for you this Sunday. If you'll join us this Sunday, uh, 10.15, weareparkplace.com. I also want to give a shout out to a friend of mine. His name is Joseph. And uh, Joseph uh, and I have a strange relationship. Let me tell you about my friend Joseph. Uh, Joseph was my mentor in business probably about uh, 10 years ago now, I'm guessing. And uh, I worked for him, and uh, he hired me, took a chance on me, and became a mentor of mine in business, uh, in the counseling center business. Uh, he and I had a bit of a falling out, and, um, uh, but not until we became partners. So first we became partners, then we had a bit of a falling out, and we had a falling out. He became my nemesis in some respects. Um, but, you know, we were always, you know, respectful of each other. And I spoke highly of him, um, though I didn't always agree with him, nor did he always agree with me. Uh, we got attorneys involved and we split the company. And it was really important to me at that time to try to work, to, to work really hard to keep my integrity intact in working with um, my company and with Joseph and uh, to continue to have a strong Christian witness uh, before him and others. And so anyway, long story short, um, this mentor, friend, nemesis um, has now become a friend again and uh, he has given his heart to Jesus and he attributes uh, at least some of that to the witness that I had uh, and live before him. So that is wonderful and a shock to me uh, because when I was in the business sector, um, I wasn't preaching or teaching or necessarily uh, witnessing that much, though I did talk about spiritual things from time to time. Uh, Joseph was always someone I found very, very interesting. My mom found him handsome. And uh, Dean and I always, always looked forward to spending time with him and appreciating him. Um, great guy has given his heart to the Lord just recently got baptized so shout out to you Joseph thank you for watching us on uh, these devotions it means the world to me uh, and that you are serving the Lord that really means the world to me too hi everybody I see you there Nancy and Dina uh, many others have chimed in um, anyway Joseph you are uh, you are an inspiration I love what God is doing in your life. I love what God is doing in your son's life. And I encourage you to stay encouraged and in tune with the Holy Spirit. Um, and, I, and, and Joseph wants to give to our church, which is fantastic. He's a, he's a wealthy businessman. Uh, he's been doing counseling centers for a long time. So I'm thankful that you would like to make a contribution to the church. Anything you can give would be appreciated, uh, whether it's $100 or whether it's a thousand dollars I don't think it'll be a million dollars but you never know uh, Joseph you are an inspiration to me and thank you so much you can give uh, anyone can give uh, go to weareparkplace.com and you can go to our website click on give and you can give there of course you can always send a snail mail check uh, at Park Place Church and we are in Pinellas Park uh, but we are parkplace.com or we are parkplace slash give. Uh, if you, the direct link would be we are parkplace. Um, we are parkplace slash give.com. Anyway, uh, we appreciate all your contributions. The church is staying open, the, the pastors are still here, and we are very thankful. Good to see you, Mary and Pam. I saw your name roll through here. And so, that's a little history with my, my experience with Joseph. He taught me the ropes about counseling centers, and I was a therapist, 
And uh, now I work as a counselor and a pastor, but my primary responsibility and calling in life is to be a pastor and the best one that I can be. And I'm thankful that I am no longer a businessman and happy to be sharing devotions with you. Just being called pastor is, uh, is an honor, a blessing, and I'm very humbled by that. It doesn't matter how much money I made or how many offices I opened. Uh, my greatest joy is sharing the Word of God with you. So um, let's get to it, shall we? If you have your Bible, turn with me to 2 Timothy. I, I do have my glasses back on today and uh, giving my eyes a rest from my contacts. So uh, I'll have them on and off throughout the lesson today because uh, I can see you from afar with my glasses on. Thank you, Larry, for joining us. But when I take my glasses off, well, I can't, I can't hardly see the screen, but I can read the word. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have your Bible, flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 1 with me. And we're going to start with verse 3. So, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. And then keep it open there for us. Uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking to a mentee of his. So I was speaking of mentors and mentees earlier with my friend Joseph, regarding my friend Joseph. And so Timothy is a young Paul. Just as I became a young Joseph in some ways, I learned the business from him. And now he's maybe... Uh, a mentee or a disciple of mine, uh, Joseph is. So second, or, or Timothy was this young man who was converted under Paul's ministry. And so he became a Christian. Not only did he become a Christian, he became a preacher and an outstanding witness uh, to many other people. And so the apostle Paul, the mentor, is writing to his mentee, Timothy. And we pick it up here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Paul says, I thank God, whom I serve as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. This is what he's saying to his mentee. But this is the... I think the crux of the passage, and this is what we're going to be studying for a few minutes this morning. In verse 6, For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. I'll say that again. I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit God gave us, it does not make us timid. Let me read that again. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So verse 7 is very powerful. It's one of Joni's favorite verses. My friend Joni, she recites this to me all the time. So it's 2 Timothy 1, 7. For the spirit of God, which he gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And that's what I want to talk about for a couple minutes today. Listen, my friends, uh, I've got some notes, and uh, he is saying to young Timothy, stir up the gift of God to kindle anew the flames of the fire in which God has been working in you. Listen, my friends, uh, there's a certain responsibility that we have to stir the flame. That is what he is saying. Fan the flame. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have a little uh, barbecue pit in my backyard. Many of you do too, and, and you have your little bonfires, and you, you realize that it starts kind of small, but you got to kind of fan it and get it going, get the other paper and kindling uh, going before you can put the big logs on it. He is saying to Timothy, fan into flame. So kindle that anew. And... Um, my question for you is, and, I, and this is a question I don't have an answer to, but why do some Christians prefer smoldering ashes over dancing fires? I mean, I don't care for the smoldering ashes. I don't want it to be like that in my fire. I can't roast marshmallows very well on that. But when I have dancing fires uh, before me and the fire is just uh, getting high and I've added more logs and, and I had to fan it into flame, now I've got this roaring fire in front of me isn't that how we want to live for the Lord? Isn't that how we want to live for Jesus? So how do you rekindle the fire? He is talking about fanning into flame. Well, three things are needed for us to rekindle our love for God. And he mentions this in verse 7. He says it's power, 
love, and self-discipline. And so I want to share this with you. Uh, and these are just three simple points. Power. Now, if we go back to Acts, uh, we're going to flip over to Acts chapter 4. If you have your Bible open still, and I hope you do, go to Acts chapter 4. If you don't have your Bible open, that's okay. Um, but we're going to be looking at Acts 4, 5 through 13. So it's very powerful because we're talking about um, power. And so this is Holy Spirit power. Uh, in Acts, the writer isn't the Apostle Paul, but it, the writer is Luke, the physician. He wrote the book of Acts, and he says, uh, speaking of an account, he says, The next day the rulers and elders and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. And as the high priest was there, and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. And this is what they said. By what power or what name do you do this? These miracles, these teachings. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed today. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected, which has now become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven in which by mankind that we must be saved, my friends. And then he goes on to say this. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. So here are the Pharisees, and they're saying, <clears throat> what power do you have to do this miracle? And by what name are you working under? See, it was typical at that time. Uh, for instance, if you look at the Apostle Paul, he was a disciple of uh, Gamaliel, uh, or, or uh, uh, basically a rich Pharisee, a man who had a lot of wisdom and is spoken of in the book of Acts. So power, where do we get our power? We get our power from the Holy Spirit. But I remember as a child uh, growing up, I always uh, looked up to my father, my earthly father. Hi, Kaylee. Thank you for joining us. I got my glasses back on so I can see some of your names there. Um, my father, growing up, enjoyed weightlifting and uh, canoeing and running. But when I was a little boy, he had a bit of a, a kind of a workout facility in our basement. And I remember he would have these big biceps and triceps and arms and shoulders. Well, we'd go camping every year. And oftentimes, we'd go camping in our travel trailer and I would, uh, we would have swimming pools or lakes, you know, where we went camping. <clears throat> and I remember as a little boy, not being able to swim just yet, not learning to swim, I would hold on to his shoulders. Hi, Mary. And he had the biggest, strongest shoulders in my mind, in my opinion, uh, of anyone else that I know, that I would know. And um, my father was a father who had power. But now that I'm an adult and I'm also a father, I realize that my true source of power comes from the Holy Spirit, comes from God, my father, in Jesus, and is manifested through him by the way of the Holy Spirit to me. And so Peter says, um, or I should say, Paul says to the young Timothy, power, love, and a sound mind, or self-discipline, depending on what translation you're reading. So now we're back over to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Now, he talks about love. Now, good to see you, Muhammad. Good to see you, my friend. Um, when we are reminded of love, you might have a uh, person in mind that you fell in love with. For me, it was um, to almost 22 years ago. Her name is Dina, and she stole my heart right away. I literally dated her for three weeks. The Lord told me she was going to be my wife. I asked her to marry me knowing her three weeks. She said yes. I wasn't surprised. And I literally married her even yet knowing her three months. Talk about love. 
I mean, I was smitten. And I think maybe she was smitten. Hi, Daphne. Thank you for joining us. Anyway, Dina would say she was smitten too. I just don't want to sound boastful. But we were smitten with each other, so we got married very quickly. It made the first year of our marriage a little bit difficult because we had never had an argument or a fight or anything like that. And so I married this 20-year-old little bombshell from Michigan, started in pastoral professional ministry, and I drug this cute little girl from Michigan. Hi, Tiffany. Good to see you. Good morning. I drug this little girl from Michigan all the way to Oregon, Portland, Oregon, where we started our first ministry assignment together. But we didn't care. We were so in love. We lived in a single wide, or I guess it was a double wide trailer, and uh, had fun and had a blast. We stayed in Oregon for two years. The rain got to me. It wasn't a place that I loved as much as she did. But that's love. And so if we go back to this particular verse, he said, Paul says to Timothy, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. The spirit that God gave us does not make us afraid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Power like my father had. Love like the love I have for my wife. And then self-discipline. Let me tell you about self-discipline. We talked a little bit about this yesterday during our devotion. Now, let's talk about the Apostle Paul. Let's keep it in the Bible. The Apostle Paul was shipwrecked, stoned, beaten, lowered from a basket to save his life, and finally he was killed. Most likely he was beheaded. Now, power, love, and self-discipline. He says those are attributes of God, and I believe they're true. Those are the true attributes of God. Power, love, and self-discipline. The way the Holy Spirit works those things in our life. Now, power in itself can be devastating. Power in itself can be very destructive. It needs the control of love and self-discipline. I think there's a reason why Paul chooses these three words to young Timothy. Because power can be destructive. I drive a Mustang, and I love my Mustang. It's a great car. I bring it out probably once a week and have a lot of fun with it. It's got a lot of power and over 400 horsepower. But nevertheless, it's a five-speed hearse shifter, and sometimes I mess around and I have fun with it, and I turn the tires, so you know how you do. But nevertheless, you know, this car can be deadly. So I have to be self-disciplined and love my car enough not to abuse it but it has a lot of power. So power in itself can be devastating and destructive, but love and self-discipline go with it. Now love can be sentimental, and it can also give way to experimentation, which also can become destructive. So love needs power and self-discipline as well. Do you remember when you were young and you maybe uh, felt in love very quickly? kind of like Dina and I did, but maybe they were more unhealthy relationships or they weren't godly relationships and the Lord didn't get involved and tell you this is the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Good to see you, Pastor uh, Eleanor and uh, Brandy. Thank you for watching us. I can only see your names when I'm wearing my glasses. But nevertheless, um, I think that love can be very destructive if it's not used properly. But the love that we have for God is a pure love. And to the pure, all things are pure. Amen? The last one is self-discipline. Now, self-discipline by itself can be bad too. Why? Because this can be academic. This can also be speculative. Uh, think about it. Uh, self-discipline, or rugged individualism, as I like to call it, um, without purpose, can be very academic and can be very uh, self motivated or self-centered. So our self-discipline, which I taught about yesterday, is helpful, but it has to work within the confines of love for God. So our self-discipline needs to be directed toward God. So therefore, I am going to discipline my mind, my mouth and my tongue, and my body, and my prayer life. Thank you, Janine, for watching. Good to see you this morning. But I have to be self-disciplined in the confines of love and power that is given to me through the Holy Spirit. So, power, love, and self-discipline given to us by God is the antidote 
is the antidote to the spirit of fear. And if you just joined us, let me just remind you that we're looking at 2 Timothy uh, 1.6. And so if you have your Bible, I'm going to reread this to you. Because what is the antidote? Let me read that to you again. Um, pow power, love, and self-discipline given to us by God through the power of the Holy Spirit is the antidote to the spirit of fear. So even though we have fear in our world, in our society, people are... Uh, anxious there's there's irrational fear there's there's people um, who are uh, over the top becoming overwhelmed with COVID-19 or this this coronavirus but let me remind you what it says Paul says to Timothy for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying out of my hands for the Spirit of God the Spirit of God gave us which he gave us does not make us timid. That is the spirit in you that God gave you, he entrusted to you, doesn't make you fearful, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So the antidote to the spirit of fear, which I would consider the spirit of this world, not the Holy Spirit, but we're making a distinction between or a differentiation between the spirit of fear and the spirit of God. The spirit of God brings peace, power, love, self-discipline. Now, do you remember when you were first given these attributes? Now, can you once again fan into flame the gifts of power, love, and self-discipline in your life? Think about how you can do that. Thank you for joining me. Kippy, good to see you, my friend. Think about how you can now re-implement these things of power, love, and self-discipline. Well, you do that by fanning the flame of the Spirit of God that is in you. Just like that fire. We don't want smoldering ashes. We want dancing fires. I want my heart, good morning, Sheila, to be a roaring fire for Jesus as I fan into flame what he is doing in my life, what he is doing in your life. That's why I am meeting with you every single morning at 11 a.m. and having prayer with you. Good to see you, Lloyd. How are you, my friend? I'm doing prayer with you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from six to seven, Dina and I are taking your prayer request and we're praying with you for a good 45 minutes and we're sharing your praises and your prayer request. Good to see you, Frank. Thank you for joining me. Miss you, my friend, and everyone in your home. So fan into flame the spirit of God that is already in you, my friends. Be encouraged. And just as Paul had a mentee named Timothy, I want to encourage you this morning to have somebody that you can pour yourself into, someone that you can encourage. I have mentors myself, but I also have some people like my friend Joseph who I am trying to mentor in the Lord, just as he mentored me in business. And so, you know, when we have these devotions, I wanna share a little bit of the Word of God with you. And I wanna share something personal about me with you. This is a time for me to, um, I guess just share a little bit of my history or my failures, my past successes. I've had more failures than successes. I don't mind sharing with you that I've made terrible mistakes in business. I'm a, um, what I would consider a failed businessman, uh, but I made some good decisions too and made some good investments along the way. I've always said even from the pulpit, I could probably write a book on what not to do in business and it would become a bestseller. So don't look at me and think I want to be like him. Uh, I hope that you look at me and say, here's a man who probably is very honest about his mistakes and has learned from them, but now wants to serve the Lord more than anything else. And even in the Lord, I have made mistakes and I have struggled with the Lord in my walk. But you know what? I just continue to press on toward the goal. And this is my goal, to hang on to the Word of God, to love my wife and my family the way you do. And you love your family and you love your church and I love you. Park Place Church, thank you for joining us today. And I just want to remind you, fan into flame, that gift of God that He has given you of power, love, and self-discipline. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for this time together today. I lift up all those that are listening to me in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for the Spirit that we can fan into flame, the Holy Spirit of the living God, 
that we can have roaring fires in our heart, Lord. We don't have to have smoldering ashes, and the fire does not need to go out because your word is alive and active. And we thank you for it, Father. Thank you for reminding us of um, Paul's desire to have many that he taught, many that he discipled, help us to do likewise. Help us to pour into new Christians, young Christians like my friend Joseph, and also to look up to others uh, that, you know, have walked with the Lord longer, have preached uh, longer than we have, or preached better than we do, and teach uh, better than we do. Father, I have mentors in my life, and I am grateful for each and every one of them. People like Pastor Pat, and people like Pastor Tom Johnson, and others, people like Bev Lewis, and others, even at Park Place Church, Lord, uh, Paul Coat and Paul Onspaugh, uh, Larry Murray, these are in my mind, Lord, people I want to be like. I want to have a faith like them. I thank you, Father, for all the people that you put in my life over the years. Pastor Ray Johnson, uh, uh, Pastor Ray Jones, rather, and others like Pastor Jay, and uh, many others that you've used to pour into me, Lord. God, you are so good. Help me to be like them. And I pray, God, that I would be an example of your wonderful spirit of fanning into flame that which you've entrusted to me until that glorious day. I pray that you would encourage us, remind us, God, to stay in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Nancy, for watching. I miss you, my friend. Miss those hugs that I used to get every Sunday morning from you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Don't forget to continue to be faithful to your tithes and your offerings. We had a pretty good offering this week, and I am thankful for that. So you can snail mail your check to Park Place Church, or you can find us at weareparkplace.com and click on Give, Joseph. And I look forward to your gift. No matter what it is, my friend, we are grateful for every penny, nickel, dime, and dollar that comes in because it's all used for God's kingdom. Thank you, Sandra. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Brandy. Have a wonderful day. I love you, my friend. Stay encouraged and be blessed. In Jesus' name, hi, Janet. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.